donations. And to everybody in the audience, thank you for hanging in there. This is a problem that we need to resolve. I've heard a lot of problems, but I'm really happy because I've heard some solutions, potential solutions. We're in it together. Jay Ignacio is part of the community. We are part of the community. We need to hold all our feet to the fire and keep speaking up and keep seeking solutions. Please. Mahalo. Uh -huh. So we are, I am Pat Brent, um, the CEO of Innovations Development Corporation. We have information up on the wall to show uh, a little bit about who our team is. And I, I share this with you just to you let you know what kind of people we've gathered as a team to work on this issue. Um, I am a um, uh, retired from the state government service. I've worked for Governors Ariyoshi and Waihe'e on community relations uh, with the Department of Education, with the Department of the Judiciary. I am now a um, uh, uh, dispute resolution person. I do a lot of mediation in my spare time. And I also work with a charter school on the island of Oahu. So a little busy. Uh, sitting next to me and with me who will aid in the presentation is Roberta Cabral. Roberta has been involved in the community for a long time. She was part of the team that originally established the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, something that we most of the time celebrate. Sometimes we, you know, we grumble about them too. We also have, um, we also have, um, Lee and Kelly Irwin. Lee owns his own CPA firm in Honolulu. His son, Kelly, is the first Hawaiian working on Wall Street, so understands the financial part of it. Patricia Talbert, Patric Patricia Medina Talbert from Maui, uh, went away and served as a judge in uh, New York, has retired, came back to work with us. Cy Bridges, I think most of you know, is a cultural consultant. You all know Miliani Trask, who is also a, an indigenous affairs consultant with us and has uh, helped open doors to us to Native <coughs> peoples and, and uh, programs. And you can see <coughs> the rest of our team. I'd be happy to talk to you about that. We are a Native-owned, Native-managed company. Our priority, and we are a for-profit company, so we do look at uh, uh, profit also, but our mission, our devotion, we are answerable to our people, not a multinational corporation. We don't send profits out of the, not only the state, but the country. We are answerable to our people. We're all local born and raised. We, um, not a foreign or owned corporation. Uh, we're Hawaii based. You can find us. Uh, we're accessible. We're available. And as Pat had stated, you know, um, our whole model is pre prefaced on the basis of uh, being accountable to the community. And that's our commitment. Um, we have established a protocol in New Zealand where we are working with the native Maoris uh, that are uh, ohana, really, to the native Hawaiians. And so similar issues. Um, and so we've walked through that exercise on understanding the complexities of you know, developing resources that as uh, uh, several people today mentioned, um, their ties to the First Amendment um, of the Constitution of re Religious Rights. And we honor that and we respect that. Interestingly, when we went down to New Zealand at the request of uh, the Maori to help them, being from Hawaii, we saw them on a path that was, you know, maybe 30 years before what we were, what was happening in Hawaii, and so we developed uh, with Mililani Trask in the, um, uh, with her work with Indigenous peoples, we developed a model that we think is unique to us, and we call it the Native to Native co Community Collaborative Model, where we insist that the natives, that the people who own the resources be involved in the decision making, be sitting at the policy making uh, table, and that we work out before any contracts are awarded, before any any uh, deals are signed, the, the, uh, the rules and the laws and the policies that we insist on. And those include cultural protections, 
Those include um, involvement of the local people in the projects, and not as um, the waiters or the janitors, but as prominent people involved in the uh, involved in the project. I remember somebody said to us, one of our partners or would-be partners, "Oh, so what? So how many Maoris are uh, engineers in geothermal?" And, and our answer was, "None now, but there will be in six years because you're going to pay for scholarships to send them through the training." That's our kind of representative our, of our attitude. Robbie, you want to talk a little bit about our two projects? Um, we have two projects underway in New Zealand uh, that were partners of uh, several two Maori trusts. Um, it's on the North Island in the central area called Rotorua and Kawarau, and that's the prominent area of the country where geothermal was featured on the North Island. Um, the first project that we are involved with um, is called the Taheke 8C Adjoining Blocks. And that particular project has just completed a very successful drilling campaign. I wish I had a photo that actually showed the protocols that's done in New Zealand. And they lead, uh, they, they lead the world in EPA. Um, but we have a photo, and I'll bring it the next time we have a chance to have a presentation with you folks, but it shows uh, lambs grazing right there in the mountains and uh, the drilling not even a uh, hundred yards away from this so the two can coexist the key is the the IP protocols the technology the engineering the environmental issues to manage these things I've, I've been hearing all day for the last five hours and I'm very thankful that I had the community I had the opportunity to hear the community and their complaints because it really makes us sit up and to listen uh, that there's a process that somehow was not uh, accomplished in terms of consultancy with community, which is a big part of development, a successful development. Somehow that's been skipped. Um, we don't operate that way. Uh, we have, as I said, native partners. Uh, they've got their own strict um, protocols and cultural traditional practices that, we, that have to be adhered. Um, you've got the community at large. And so um, I guess what I'm saying is in our experience in, in New Zealand working with a uh, very strict EPA, we're able to succeed. Uh, uh, in our first project, we completed drilling. Uh, we're moving to a 75 megawatt project. The average project in the United States as an independent power producer in geothermal is between 6 and under 10 megawatts. So these are considered uh, large-scale utility projects. The second project that um, we're in as well, called the Te Ahi o Maui, uh, is also with another trust, the AAD Trust. Um, we're in partnership with, believe it or not, uh, a company by the name of Eastland Energy, which is a, a for-profit arm of the municipality of uh, the east coast of New Zealand on the North Island in the area called Gisborne. Um, they're a municipality who ha owns the rights to easements uh, basically formed a, f a community trust and then formed a for-profit arm that allows them to engage in development with, on behalf of their community. So our for-profit partner really is the community. And so um, in that particular project, we've, we're ready to go in terms of permitting. Uh, we should be, um, within the next month or two, approved for our resource consents that allows us to go out and to construct and we're, we're, our first phase of that project is 20 megawatts that will be operational in under 18 months. And then the balance of 50 megawatts uh, that will come online in a total of five years. But um, I, the thing I want to emphasize about our experience there under a very strict uh, environmental process is that we've been able to coexist with community, with natives, and with the natural habitat. And so I, I, hearing the stories today, uh, it's been obviously a lack of consultancy with consultation with community. There's been a real lack of real strong dialogue to come up with a plan, a geothermal plan, that uh, all could buy into, all stakeholders. A plan that is correct for Hawaii. To tell you about New Zealand to let you know that we have some experience in this area and we've gone through some um, problems and issues that they have very similar to ours but I think the message today very strongly was we need to go we need to go where the problem is we uh, the
potential uh, project is going to be. We need to talk to the people. We need to find out. We want to hear the noise and feel the, the shaking and whatnot. And that's what we plan to do. So I'm really happy that you did this today because we also learned a lot. I talked to you about our native to native model. We're committed to that. We think it was what helped us work with the Maori who were new to us and uh, we kept thinking that they're us, you know, they're, they're us. So don't do what we did in Hawaii, you know, let us give you our, the benefit of our experiences. But this is what we're committed to do. We, we have uh, a cultural impact uh, pro program in place so that we are not only um, preserving things but also restoring things and making things accessible that weren't before. We're looking at things that are environmentally sustainable and we're looking to honor the trust fiduciary responsibilities. Okay, so we operate under what we call the Native to Native or Community Collaborative Models that, uh, as we said, that, that's designed to work into indigenous communities. Um, it's based on the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, a document that was ratified in the UN in 2007 uh, by most of the major countries throughout the world. It recognizes uh, that there is a de uh, development and, and improvement of resources in an equitable way for community, that there needs to be protection of cultural sites, environmental sustainability, and trust fiduciary principles. You know, we talked about um, stakeholders or community collaboration, and we know that. So we know that the state, the county, the local community, and the Native Hawaiian community are important partners. And I tell you something else. As soon as people heard, because we've been working with international experts in the field, that we were starting up a project, we have had offers um, from companies international companies to come in. They want to be our equity partners. They want to provide financing. We've got a lot of interest. But we're sitting here saying, no, wait. If we partner <coughs> with a company out of state, then any equity or any profits are going to go out of state. Our state needs the funding. That's why we come to the county. That's why we're talking to the state, DLNR, DHHL, OHA. We're saying, look, you know, we do have finances. We have the opportunity to raise the funds, but we need you guys to partner with us because we want that money to stay here and continue to help us in different ways. Helpful <coughs> is the target. They've got the, you know, the, the target on their back, but they have to deal with PUC. They have to deal with their stakeholders. They have to do, deal with their shareholders, so it's up to us to go to PUC and fight for them too. It's, it's, it's a, it's a cock thing. We all need to be in there. We all need to understand the urgency and we need to work together. That's the only way it's going to work. And we're so far behind. We are so far behind. We need to go. Not so quickly that we bulldoze over people and their needs, but we better get with it because we are so far behind. And my, I don't know about you, but my electric bills, you know, give me catatonic seizures every month. Um, we operate under a Pono model. Um, I, I, what I was hearing today, which uh, IDG fully agrees, support, and we're focused on. It's not about a thousand megawatts. It's about one step of designing the plan that everyone, that stakeholders can buy into, that the community is comfortable with. It's about one RFP that's coming up for 50 megawatts <coughs> per pico. Uh, I, we've heard you clearly today. We've heard uh, council members, we, we hear the community. And you're right, <coughs> this isn't about 1,000 megawatts today. It's about domestic generation for big island needs. And as we set the protocols in place, we, we can then proceed as every, all stakeholders are satisfied that we have a plan moving forward and how are, are the communities who are hosting this impacted by this. And we recognize that. So I wanted to you know, acknowledge that to say we are hearing you. We are hearing you. What IDG is saying is that we're an alternative to what's what's available. And we want to stress the fact that we're Hawaii-based. We're a part of the fabric, just like all of you guys. We're from here, our neighbors, our community. We're from the community. We're here to work with you. We've developed two successful models in, in New Zealand where you know our Maori partners and our Kiwi partners are prepared to come to town and say the good that we've done to change the landscape, to bring and bridge the relationships between the broader Kiwi community 
and Maori community to come together for the benefit of all. And that's what we're here to say. And there's special, there's special um, uh, caretaking need, need addressing. Uh, and we, we recognize the whole issue of uh, uh, the Native Hawaiian protocols and, and Native Hawaiian cultural protections. And that's an area that our community needs to come together as Native Hawaiians. We need to sit down kuka kuka and address where we all come from. But I think we've got to respectfully agree to disagree on some issues and some approaches. We're never going to make everybody happy. But this is our culture. This is our history. These are our resources. These are our traditional practices. Um, you know, I traced my genealogy and my bloodlines 1820 in Pohoiki. Um, my uh, tutu man is uh, Mono Makai Honua, uh, Kahu Ena Opele. He was, um, I talked to uh, some of the families here in Hilo, the, the Lilois and everyone who are Ohana, who remind me that um, my, my tutu man was a practitioner of tutu pele. You know, as late as 19, the 1950s, I think he passed away in 1955. It's in our bloodlines. We are respectful. We want to hear what our brothers have to say and our sisters and sit down and talk with them. Uh, and, and build that bridge of how we can come together to agree or agree to disagree. But do it respectfully and in a Hawaiian way. There's no need for hate. There's no need for anger. There's there's need for us to come together, definitely. Um, our, uh, well, uh, we call ourselves, well, we call our project a four-legged stool, culturally appropriate, environmentally sustainable, socially responsible, and economically sensible. So we're looking at all those areas in order to develop a process. And I would say to you, let's find something that works and go for it. We can take a small step, but we need to take that step. I mean, it's been years, and in 20 years, how has that impacted us? How has that impacted this island? Did the electrical rates in Puna go down? Did the, did the problems with the air quality and whatnot de decrease? No, it hasn't. Why hasn't it? Why hasn't it? That's a question we have to ask, and everybody, every one of us in this room has to hold to the, their feet to the fire of the people who are responsible for it. And one thing we gotta do is look at already what's, what's already in place and make sure those things are working. Make sure those evacuation uh, plans are, are worth the paper that they're written on. And let's get moving. Culturally appropriate. Culturally appropriate. What IDG brings is oversight by Native development partners. Uh, we have a Native to Native model um, that uh, <coughs> recognizes the rights of Native people to participate in the development of their resources and to be at the table in terms of governance uh, of policies. Uh, cultural protections undertaken is in compliance with the established judicial processes here in Hawaii uh, that resulted as a res uh, from the, the landmark case from the Pele Defense Fund many years ago. Billy Lani Trask is one of our uh, principals, is, uh, was one of the attorneys. My Ohana Yukon Alui and Melody McKenzie were lead attorneys on that case. Um, our project development agreements include cultural protection measures and protocols for all cultural resources, which include identification and preservation of all cultural resources, utilization of cultural vehicles and mechanisms for the project, and retention of project consultants and subcontractors for cultural protection, designation of project footprint and implementation of mitigation curator plans if needed. You notice this is the first leg on the stool because right now we're doing it as an afterthought. When there's a complaint, when there's a suit, then we pay attention to it. Well, that's not acceptable to us. If you want to work with us, if you want part of this program, that's the first leg of the stool. You need to commit to that. Environmentally sustainable. Um, oil, gas related issues and problems <coughs> are not sustainable. Fuel toxicity and environment, greenhouse gas emissions, Sequoia fossil fuel cost increases, security issues, both politically, socially, and for our food security, are really big issues in terms of the existing um, uh, oil oil driven plants. Uh, volatile and unpredictable unpre oil gas market pricing. Uh, I've heard conversations on that all day today. Um, energy <coughs> self sufficiency for each island. Uh, via a diverse energy portfolio mix of renewable generation is what we believe to be the key of moving uh, renewable energy forward. You've heard um, 
about social responsibility, I say again, IDG's projects are committed to res respecting Hawaii's cultural involvement. And how do you do that? By listening to the people and going where they are and finding out what's happening. Benefit sharing with community stakeholders uh, from pro project proceeds. Fair and reasonable cost to ratepayers. We don't support price fixing. We don't support not tra uh, transferring all avoided costs to the community. And for those of you that don't understand what avoided costs are, basically you have two costs in a project and the right to a reasonable <coughs> and fair return under the purple law. And um, an avoided cost represents uh, a, an inflated cost to those returns. What's PURPA? PURPA is the Public Utility Regulated Policies Act, and it's a federal law. And uh, under the law, uh, it says that uh, the ratepayer is entitled to a fair and reasonable rate. Well, I've got to ask the question. We've had geothermal for almost 20 years. Uh, has there been co uh, benefits to the community? Has there been a fair rate? Um, these are issues that we've been hearing all day today that seems to be a big issue that hinders the potential development of geothermal. Uh, I, I can hear the complaints, I understand the issues that people are complaining of geothermal, but I'm, I don't know if the people have yet had the benefit of sitting down with developers that have better technologies, a better protocol, and a better approach to development. And we don't believe that uh, baseball uniforms or even a school bus is enough that they're making benefits off of our assets and resources. IBG, in one of our drafts, is proposing 2% of the profits to go into a community trust fund to be used as the community decides to use it. And, you know, to make that real commitment to involving the community and bringing benefits back, aside from hopefully lower cost energy, safe energy, and participation in the development. Now you've heard about the history. Geothermal's not new. Uh, it's been here in Puna for 20 years. In 1881, Kalakaua, who was a, like a, a technical genius, you know, he loved to look at these things. He went to the mainland and met with Thomas Edison and was intrigued by the, by the brain of Thomas Edison and electricity and, the, and everything else. And he brought that, uh, he brought that technology back. Our uh, Hawaii State Capitol uh, Palace was the first institution <coughs> that had electricity even before the White House. So our people are with it. If we listen, we know the answers. So the past mistakes and problems historically that's taken place was there was no consultation with community. Um, this, the selection of the site and the technology at the time, the cultural access for gathering, worship, heritage pr protection, preservation, uh, negative impact to uh, native religious belief system, uh, environmental issues in terms of exploratory problems, conservation uh, options were not uh, pursued, no benefit for the local consumer, the native Hawaiians, and residents who are owners of this resource. And before we leave, you know, we want to talk about the fact that we can benefit. It wasn't all bad, what has happened in the past. The Pele Defense Fund case set standards for public and native stakeholders. They've, they, we have laws now that assure those rights that people talked about being uh, 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 played around with and being uh, restricted. Development of the subsurface estate, we found out now, need not destroy or damage the surface estate. We also know that geothermal is a minimal right that with the state law belongs to both the Native Hawaiian and the public. So for once we're talking about development in Hawaii where we don't have to be divided, the Native against the non-Native. This is something that can benefit the whole community and that's how we're going to look at it. Before we leave, we want to make sure that everybody understands that there are also collateral benefits from geothermal besides just the production of uh, lower cost energy. There are uh, uses for steam and energy that can help small business. Under our plan uh, and collaborating with the community, we're looking to form a community trust just as our partners in New Zealand has done. Um, we would be committed under a 50 megawatt project 
uh, to commit 2% of our gross income. This is before we pay taxes, pay for the capital, the, the costs of the money, pay for the actual project. We'd be committed to putting uh, approximately $1.25 million of our gross uh, for the term of, of uh, and lifetime of a project. And in New Zealand, the average project uh, lifetime is 40 to 50 years. You know, we're talking about 150 megawatt project committing to the community somewhere around $63 million uh, as a means for community capacity building to show serious commitment to the community that we view you as our partners. Um, fair and reasonable cost to the repairs. Um, job training and on-site employment, scholarships, uh, a public-private partnership uh, with state utilizing state or possibly county um, lands or uh, and, and state use of mineral uh, uses and uh, forming a public-private partnership where we all come together as stakeholders where ultimately the development could become a publicly held uh, utility. We, um, in addition to the benefits of discounted costs uh, for, the, for the energy, we also have a whole lot of secondary small business opportunities. Our vision is creating a renewable energy industrial park where we could be using <coughs> our steam for drying food. I think we're going, to, um, we're going to show that timber drying, the steam from uh, the geothermal plant can provide that to our people. In this island, when you need industry, you need jobs, we see a whole a slew of opportunities here. Food drying, using the geothermal steam. Hot houses and greenhouses, climate control facilities, all things that other, other nations are using as offshoots of geothermal. This is what we're doing in New Zealand. We're, we're, it, we're not just delivering electricity to their grid, we're working with their stakeholders to develop community capacity building and as uh, Pat described, small business opportunities by making a commitment of not just the community trust to provide community you know, access to cash, which is one of the hardest things, especially in a bad economy, but also <coughs> to make available steam and at, at a discount and in some cases under a partnership of some sort. That helps to drive the economy. Uh, so the issue is um, Hawaii is in an energy crisis. And we've got $7 billion a year that uh, basically go up to for our exports in uh, importing oil. Um, we've talked about all these issues today, and I won't belabor it, but we know there's a problem. The good news is Hawaii has an energy bounty. Uh, we have a vast uh, and, and valuable uh, renewable energy resource um, portfolio. The public ceded lands trust assets, which are owned by the public and Native Hawaiian, uh, there's geothermal minerals as a possibility, um, ocean resources, OTEC, tidal, uh, and wind, as well as solar. We're not saying that geothermal is the exclusive. We're saying that it's one of the answers for firm power. And it's a stark reality, because while there's other things, it's yet to be commercially proven. And that takes a process. You know, I've, I've heard comments about geothermal as uh, outdated, and it's, no, it's not. It's actually in its burgeoning stages. It's been around for a long time, but its technology has evolved. And it's become um, um, a, a very good, and I hate to use the word clean energy, but that's what's being touted in the industry globally. We believe that our, our kupuna and our gods have provided a wonderful opportunity <coughs> for us, the sun, the ocean, Pele. You know, these things are, are um, things that we feel can be used if it's, u if it's culturally appropriate for the benefit of the community and not as disrespectful or, um, you know, uh, abandoning all of the principles that we stand in. Everybody in this room, probably if we polled you, we'd have, you know, maybe at least a dozen different religions or different belief systems. And we support those. We support that. We don't disrespect Tutu Pele. We revere her. And so we need to talk to those people that are Pele worshippers, those people that are Christians, those people that are Buddhists or whatever, and get the best ideas from these people and continue to use that to benefit the community as a whole. That's where we are. So we ask, where is the county of Hawaii in this scenario? We've taken the liberty, a uh, little mahaoi, to create a list of questions that we'd like you to ask before you consider any proposal for geothermal. And in 
in many cases it raised the questions that were raised in the in the hearing today and we need us to ask those questions before we go any further there have been mistakes in the past they're not being corrected the helco has tried to correct some of them they're not being corrected okay well let's figure out what these things are and let's be aggressive and take steps to correct the problems that we already have we have a uh, uh, evacuation uh, fund. We have rules in place to help these people. Why aren't they working? Let's go find out and let's do it. So take care of what we know about now and then use that to move on to the future. That's going to be the best for all of us, Native Hawaiian and non-Hawaiians alike. That's what we ask. We have had several meetings on the Big Island as well as Maui and Oahu and we surveyed the people that were at the um, at those meetings, I have a uh, summary of the of the surveys in your packets. Ninety-five percent support of geothermal was the lowest number in Hilo. Hundred percent in Waimea. Hundred percent in Kona. A hundred percent from labor groups. Ninety-seven percent support in Puna. Our first meeting, which was something you know, maybe it was who was there at the meeting. I don't know, but we had. We were amazed. Their support was based on the model that we offered. Their support was made on the promises that we made about being responsible culturally, socially, economically. And we present ourselves as accountable to that promise. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, colleagues, let the record show that Mr. Yoshimoto's voice has deserted him and he's deserted his chair, too, for a few minutes. So I'll be the chair of the, this particular meeting for the balance since I'm vice chair of this committee. Uh, thank you, Ms. Bram, for the explanation. I do appreciate that. Council members, comments? Uh, Mr. Palago? Uh, no, Mr. Onishi, go ahead first. Uh, just get on my there. Thank you. Okay. You mentioned about this survey that was conducted, and I, when you first mentioned, like, Puma, I heard some kind of kind of, kind of thing. Well, there was 100 people at the meeting. There wasn't 45,000 in population that's from and, Puna. And where was the meeting held at? Uh, it was on April 9th at no, the Pahoa. No, where? 2011, April 9th no, no, at no, Pahoa. No, where? Where was it? At the Pahoa oh. Rec Center. Okay. We were surprised. And then your Hilo meeting, how many people were there? About 75. And then you had your white mail? Yeah, we had about maybe 30. 30. Mm -hmm. And then you had Kona? That was a big one, that was like 100. That was, yeah, 100 something. Yeah. And that was like right in Kailua town, or you had it like south? We had it at the high school, there in Kiala. Okay. 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 okay, and then your last one is yeah. okay. the labor force. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Palago, any comments? We know that as people learn more, there will be more questions, but, and we're ready for that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bryant. Uh, Mr. Palago, do you have any uh, comments? Um, not at this time, sir, except I wish to continue um, listening in, and uh, I'll be contributing very soon. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any further comments on this particular... Uh, uh, go ahead, Mr. Yagong. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, and thank you so much well, for, for being here today. I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. You know, normally when we, we talk about geothermal, you know, normally it's the, we talk about PEG. I mean, and, and that's the only entity normally that's actually being talked around. So when I have an opportunity to hear about this proposal, thank you, Ms. Cooper, for coming to my office and, uh, you know, um, and talking about this issue, I, I thought it was extremely important that uh, we, we provide you an opportunity to, to actually, obviously, you introduce yourself to the community during the, the meetings, but introduce yourself to the to the, uh, the council, and be that this is televised, you know, I say to the common void. So I thought that was very important to make people understand that uh, in terms of geothermal and entities out there uh, that are in, you know, this uh, uh, arena, I want to make sure that uh, we have an opportunity to, to see who you are and meet you then. And I will tell you that I did do some research on your, you know, your company, and uh, I did, uh, you know, um, research all the folks that are on your board. I, I just want to say that I was extremely um, uh, impressed with the people that you put together to represent uh, your company. 
I think, um, I, you know, for me personally, and, and putting aside the whole issue of geothermal, uh, you know, I think it's important that uh, when you do, uh, uh, you know, you try to uh, push it, whether it's a technology or a company, and, and work with the community, it's important the people that, that we deal with as community are people that, first of all, I think are upstanding people. And I just want to say, just based on the people that's on your board, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. And uh, so I, I just wanted to say that personally because I, I, I did you know, make sure that I, I, I know who I'm talking to. So, so I want to say thank you for that. Um, but we are going to continue discussion, obviously. This is something that's very important to this island. I, I continue to invite you to be part of this uh, discussion. And more important, I think, be part of the discussion where we are going to be including the community to make sure that their, their voices um, continue to be heard and be part of the uh, you know, we have a lot of information, but we have a lot to learn. So we appreciate the opportunity to hear from the community too, and I'm going to make some appointments to go and talk with some of them. Yeah. And, I, and, and I'll just say one last thing, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, you know, um, in regards to what was discussed with this particular proposal, the thing that many people out there do talk to me about when it comes to, to geothermal um, development is whether or not that is going to equate to a reduction in your electrical bill. <laughs> you know, it's the first time I've heard that, you know, your project is equating or will be equating to lower electrical bill uh, uh, costs for the uh, people of the county of Hawaii. So I, 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 I found that as some refreshing information, something that I've never heard before. That's pretty standard. You know, in, in New Zealand, we're paying uh, uh, somewhere around, uh, I think it's $80 eighty dollars a megawatt is the actual rates to uh, generators. Uh, it's far more significant here. Obviously costs here are a little bit, you know, it's higher here in Hawaii and whatnot. What, what we're just trying to establish is that there's another way of doing it and there's other approaches. And that we're basically a Hawaii-based group doing geothermal internationally and we've seen successful geothermal projects. The transaction come together and it's just moving beautifully and that it can be done here, but I think it needs to present a whole, uh, you know, uh, op some options for the community to see that, you know, uh, it's not just, we're not married to one technology. We're developers and we're going to find the best, best technology based on the exploratory. Uh, if anything, as a local group, we offer being a gatekeeper. We may end up in a partnership with, a, with an ORMAT or somebody like an ORMAT, we don't know. But our job is to do what, all the things that we said that we would do, and that's what we've done in New Zealand with Maori and in bridging the communities, and we think we can accomplish it here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you. Further comments? Seeing none, we have on the floor communication 651. I'll be brief, sir. I'd, I'd like to take this opportunity, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Plato. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like, first of all, to thank uh, Director Brandt for your presentation and for bringing forward your group uh, for this discussion and Director Cabral. Thank you both very, very much. Yeah, I wish to mahalo to the both of you and to your team. What we have is a great difficulty in that uh, there are corporations that appear to be forcing uh, issues onto our community and using this county council as a venue for that debate to happen and it's a very difficult uh, job that we all have. The other thing we have government that has been very very forceful also in promoting some of their initiatives but we don't have enough of an opportunity to bring in the people's voice and that's what I see you capable of helping us with. The resolution lies not only in the power generation aspects, and I like what Ms. Cabral said in that uh, it may be that you will not be the, uh, the power developer or the power generator, but may help facilitate that cause. It may not be the current PVG or ORMAT that we're looking at as a power generation source. But we see that the uh, developer of geothermal is only one part of the problem. We need help not only to resolve who the developer will be in respect to providing geothermal power or where and when it would be uh, situated and how strong a facility it would be. But we deal with other aspects also. 
and that is the community benefit package. What are the benefits to the package if our native resources is tapped into? There's also a thing that we need to consider that's not been covered fully, and that is the creation and generation of power is only one aspect of the whole uh, cycle of geothermal power in that we still need to move the power by transmission lines into, and that transmission system again will be another contractor that take part. Some people only do development of power. Other people do transmission of power. And from there, there's some technical aspects that we need help with, is once the power is marshaled, where do the distribution points and the reconversion points happen? So the, the issue is a very complex one and it gets much more difficult. But it brings, it brings to, uh, to all of us that there needs to be discussion along the full range and spectrum of this process. And that's what we lack and need help with. And that's what I see uh, institutions and agencies as yourself providing for us uh, that means of reasonable and rational discussion and debate. I just wanted to share that, that uh, our challenge only begins with uh, if geothermal is reasonable and viable, but there are other issues that we need to discuss that are part of the spectrum of renewable and sustainable energy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pilago. I don't see any further lights. <coughs> Mr. Clark. Ms. Ford, the vote? Aye. Thank you. Mr. Anishi? Aye. Mr. Pilago? Aye. Ms. Ford? Aye. Mr. Yagawa? Aye. Mr. Yoshimoto? Aye. Chair Hoffman? Aye. You missed me. <laughs> Mr. Akeda. Hi. Okay. <laughs> Please don't miss Mr. Akeda. <laughs> Over there on the side. I missed him, sorry. Uh, Chair, often you have eight eyes. Thank you very much. Uh, communication 651 is filed. Thank you very much, ladies. Uh, thank you, uh, folks in the audience. been a long meeting for the, this particular committee. It's 4 o'clock. We're about three hours behind. We have several other committees to go through, and we'll take a five-minute break. Uh, wait a minute. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Good. Get out of here. Them, huh? Yeah, but well, what do you want to tell the world? Because well, we're still on the internet. Call it. Oh, go. 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 go out there. Go. Oh. I mean, the feds. Now that everybody, their presentation is given all over the world. Competitive feds. They're using as, as a marketing tool. You're letting everybody think that we're okay with this. Right. They have yeah, to take it off. They decided you <coughs> decided Pele Defense. It's a marketing yeah. tool. No. The number one, the number Come one. Tell us what it really is, yeah? They should have used that. <coughs> Period. Because of your images, of that's what you were yeah. saying? They, yeah, I don't want to be yeah. part they of it. They have this. to remove that. <laughs> well, they have to. I know. <laughs> because now, when we go and give our voice, you can say, well, I thought you guys were for this because of their marketing tool, advertising. Talk to him too. Go talk to Alan. Alan who? Alan McNair, our brother's a journalist. He's he's a good guy. Good guy. <laughs> Alright, I gotta pull my power plugs. <laughs> Hold up. Hopefully we'll have enough power to get the aftermath going on here. People are irritated. Big time. Alright, get my bag. Oh.
I've got that set. Talk to the people. Oh, actually, it doesn't Well, it does. I will talk to you. I will talk to you, and I will talk to Millie Lenny, but I will tell Millie Lenny you would like to please do. I am. I'll only help you with you. Polly Tonko, and I would like you to remove that. That is not true. You're marketing Pelly Defense Fund in order to promote your ideals. You know, our, our team was involved in that. Polly like, Tonko, they were three of them. Polly Tonko won this war. I'm not going to have this conversation. Help us up with it when the attorneys want it. She's right there. You can tell him, you can yeah. tell him to come over here. Be happy. We are the representatives of the You can tell him to come over here. Melody McClendon and Lily Lemon Trust are looking at the attorneys. And that's part of Kennedy. That's fine. She has no right to be using that. They took it all. They took it to the court. They took it to the court. They took it to the They took it to the court. 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 Talk to Billy about it. We need you to remember that because we are promoting otherwise. I'll talk to Millie about We are promoting this otherwise. You have to take our name off. Give me yeah, that was disgusting. Entity. Give me your number. And we are a legal entity. Give me your phone number and I will have your marketing team. I'm going to talk to you. Millie Lani is not part of our organization. Millie Lani won the case. Millie Lani won the case. Millie Lani and Melody McKenzie won the case. No, 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 no. Polly Kapu. Yes. That doesn't make it okay. It doesn't that make it okay disgusting. for using our name. I don't need you to tell me about my culture. I don't need you to tell I'm us about, you about, about my culture. I don't care. You're going to I don't care. care for that. Yeah, well, are you, you, are you touching me? I'm not touching you. Are you touching me? I'm not touching you. You keep your hands to yourself. I'll tell you this, right? Oh, I thought you guys were all like this. You're good with the Hawaiians. Oh, wow. You know what? You're not part of it. I live there. You should be part of it. Can you tell me I'm not part of it? Yeah. So you're not part of Pele Defense. Don't use Pele Defense. Don't use Pele Defense. Don't use Pele Defense. Don't use Pele Defense. is not part of Pele Defense Fund. She has no right to do that. I never saw her ever. I've never seen her. She, never she is not. Her. And they got our pictures up there like they say in the forest. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to call her face and then chew us all out here. That's not cool. That's not cool. What is that? That's not cool. Okay. <coughs> You have to take yeah. that off. That was disgusting. You got our picture of the rainforest. I never saw him. You got our picture of the rainforest. 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 You got our picture of the that was disgusting. Off of your your bullshit platform. That wasn't cool. Oh, that's so that's not sad. cool. Hey, you don't want to see the line. No, don't want to see the line. That's the truth. Yeah. You cannot it use Pelly Defense Fund oh, for your marketing. Uh -huh. It's your marketing tool. It is Pelly Defense Fund. It was the Pelly Defense Fund.